So I was, uh, I just got this scope. I never really had an oscilloscope before. But uh, one of the things I've been interested in, that I, I saw a Hackaday article uh, where somebody took a, essentially just a PCB and a 555 timer and they made a, um, a rotary encoder out of that. And essentially the, 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 the way that it works is the capacitance and the frequency are inversely proportional. So if you can generate a frequency with your 555 timer, um, what you can do is you can charge a capacitor with the, the generated frequency and then the output frequency should correspond to the capacitance of whatever it is that you want to measure. And that's essentially a square wave just like you see here. And this particular square wave right now is 73.5 kilohertz. So um, I've got the negative electrode on this side and I've got the positive electrode on this side and then I've got the, I think it's pin 3 uh, hooked up to the oscilloscope here. So um, they're just two pretty standard kind of plates with some isolation in the middle. Um, I thought this was, was actually going to work differently. Um, you can see it has a real nice response to touch capacitance. Um, if I touch it, it'll drop down to about 5 kilohertz uh, because of my skin. Um, and even if I get close, you, you can still see a signal without physically touching it. Um, I made this as an initial prototype that I ended up um, modifying. But what I did is I, I just put um, some scotch tape across these two surfaces. And what I found is that when I put this on top of here, and when the plates are bridging from the positive to the negative electrode, um, Right here I get about 39.1 uh, kilohertz and if I rotate that 90 degrees then I get about 67.6 kilohertz. Um, and you can see if I continue to rotate it, which is a little fiddly because this isn't exactly easy to do with your fingers, but the frequency will, will the frequency correlates to the rotation. Um, now you only get you only get 90 degrees of rotation before you start to swing back so you in theory you you, you can um, you know you can detect the, ang the angle of the two plates to 90 degrees and past 90 degrees you know there, there's I think you could put another plate in here as a reference plate to figure out which direction you're turning um, but I don't think I don't think beyond 90 degrees you really this this is this is functional. But for a 90 degree rotation and something like a um, you know a feedback for like for example a um, galvanometer um, this this might actually be responsive enough and sensitive enough to to do something useful with. Now you can see that if I press on the plate without rotating it. Um, I get a, about 20% variation and mechanically trying to figure out how to keep these two plates uh, which are not really likely very flat at all um, trying to keep them at the same distance is a bit of a challenge because as soon as you start to push this plate into this plate with any, any kind of friction there's not a lot of friction because of the scotch tape but eventually that'll wear and um, that'll create a problem. So I guess you know I don't really know that this is super useful. What I, it's, like there is a library in Arduino that allows you to measure frequency up to you know a megahertz or so. Uh, I've also experimented with an ESP32, um, which lets you get up upwards of five megahertz, uh, maybe even more, um, which is a pretty good, pretty good, you know. Uh, range that you can uh, that that you can measure to, but I you know I don't I don't know if the the amount of resolution that you get would be worth the trouble for an Arduino. It's like the the library that people use is 
you know it's hardwired to a single pin for timer one on a single board. You can't use this on a you can't use that library on, for example, like a a Pro uh, Mini or a Pro Micro. I mean, um, you know, the, the library. I don't think the library is available for an STM32. Although I think you can do um, a PWM wave capture uh, with a timer on on an STM32, and you can do it on an STM or I'm sorry, an ESP32. Um, I don't think an 8266 ESP8266 uh, would give you much uh, resolution. I don't think you can get into the 100 kilohertz range. Um, but it's kind of cool. It's something I was uh, messing around with. And um, the first thing I did with my new scope. So um, if anybody has any ideas on how to make this a bit more real, um, post it down in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching.